This is a mega evolving battle. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, welcome back to some Gen 7 Pokemon battles. Uh, today is not a random battle, we're doing something just a little bit different. I've got a monotype poison team, as uh, you can see behind me. Poison is a really, really, really nice type. Uh, definitely good for a stalling monotype if that's what you want to do. You got those toxic spikes. It's really, really nice. Um, as far as types to watch out for, we've only got Ground and Psychic. I have Pokemon to subvert both of those types, which we will talk about as we get to them. So, my first Pokemon out. My lead Pokemon is a Toxapex. Really, really cool uh, Poison and Water type from Gen 7. And uh, he's got Black Sludge and Regenerator, both of which will increase his longevity on the field and allow me to get those Toxic Spikes up almost every single time. He's got uh, more of an offensive moveset. I gave him mostly HP and Attack EV, so he's a really, really bulky attacker. He's really, really nice, and with that Regenerator, uh, you can recover 33% of your HP every time you're switching out, which uh, keeps him... Keeps him healthy, keeps him keeps him as a, a threat throughout the entire match. So he's got Liquidation, which is a water type move, Poison Jab to take care of those fairy types, and uh, Payback, which will take care of psychic types if he can live a hit. Uh, usually he has to be at full HP because um, although his special defense is quite high, his HP is rather low, uh, which kind of lets him down. But regardless, I find him to be relatively helpful, and uh, he's definitely deserving of a place on the team. You could also go for Nihiligo, uh, which is that rock and poison type, but I simply didn't want to give uh, any more ground weaknesses to this team, because it already has quite a quite a few. Uh, so one of our ground immunities is Crobat, who has a choice band, um, which allows him to hit really, really hard. He's got uh, Adamant Nature which means that he's going to be hitting even harder. Uh, and then I didn't give him a jolly nature to increase his speed because he's already fast as hell. Uh, Crobat doesn't really need the help, to be quite honest. He's got Infiltrator, which allows him to get past substitutes, reflects, light screens, whatever you wish, um, so the opponent will have a really, really hard time stopping the doom that is Crobat. Uh, he's got U-Turn and Brave Bird, Zen Headbutt and Cross Poison. U-turn allows him to act as a bit more of a scouter. Uh, I'll send him out if I think that the opponent is going to counter Toxpex right off the bat, and then you can hit the U-turn and uh, go into something that would be a bit stronger against whatever their lead Pokemon is. So Crobat, definitely uh, a threat. You could go for Night Slash instead of Zen Headbutt, which I might might switch that up uh, at some point in the future, but for now I think it uh, works relatively well, especially against opposing poison type teams. So the third, we're halfway through the team now, we've got Nidoking uh, with Life Orb and Sheer Force. Really uh, the Life Orb recoil is cancelled out by Sheer Force if the move you're using has a secondary ability. At the moment the only move we have... Um, with the secondary ability would be Poison Jab. So Poison Jab is going to get increased uh, damage by 30% while also removing its chance to poison. And it also removes the uh, the Life Orb recoil, which is really, really cool. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find a whole lot of other moves unless he was a special attacker. I might switch him to a special attacker later, but at the moment this uh, really offensive team seems to be working, physically offensive team. So he's got Earthquake and Stone Edge, which gives that perfect coverage, uh, can basically hit everything for at least neutral damage, and then he's got Sucker Punch, which is nice for priority, and Poison Jab. And uh, he's got the attack and speed EVs, and he has a jolly nature to increase his speed even further because he does need the help just a little bit. Nidoking is a Gen 1 Pokemon, and he's a bit on the slow side. So the speed EVs help, Sucker Punch helps, uh, those priority moves, as always, extremely, extremely important. So I, I really do enjoy Nidoking, and uh, he's he's deserving of a place on the team. He's, he's an OG, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, our fourth Pokemon, Scolipede, from Gen 5, I believe. 
so he's a bit of a, a newer face on the battling scene. He's got a black sludge for his item, which will increase longevity, and then he's got speed boost for his ability, so every turn he's going to be increasing his speed by 50%, which is fucking massive, especially when you consider the fact that he has sword stance. I've given him earthquake poison jab and rock slide for his moveset. Earthquake and rock slide, again, giving that perfect coverage. Poison jab will take care of basically anything else, uh, and it also offers the same type of attack bonus. Bug and Poison is an interesting type, uh, because you're basically neutral, you get neutral hits from ground, which is, uh, pretty important. And then he's also got the, the speed to outspeed most psychic Pokemon, so Scolipede is a real operator as far as I'm concerned. You set up that sword stance in the first turn, and then, uh, the speed boost starts taking effect, and you'll basically, uh, sweep like a freaking broom. He has plus attack, uh, adamant nature, which means uh, he's going to be hitting even harder at the loss of some speed, which means you might need to get a couple more turns of speed boost in there before you're able to outspeed absolutely everything, but I find that usually that's not a problem for Scolipede. He's got relatively good uh, natural defensive bulk, so if you switch him in on a fighting type move, he's going to take one-fourth damage from that. And uh, that's a really, really nice thing. Uh, Scolipede has some nice resistances. And although he has the, uh, the fire-type weakness now, uh, we've got Toxapex and a few other things that will allow him to uh, work around it just a little bit. Um, although you don't really want to switch him out because you've got the, the boosts. He's a boosting motherfucker. Speed boost and sword stance, you want to keep those on him as much as possible so he can uh, do the damage that he's supposed to do. Anyways, fifth Pokemon in the team, we've got Venusaur. Really, really nice. He's a mega evolving Venusaur, so he's got the Venusaurite, and uh, his ability is Overgrow. That is until he mega evolves, and then he will have the Thick Fat ability, which reduces fire and ice moves by half, uh, basically making it a neutral hit on him, which is really, really powerful. Uh, and that's why I've decided to make this Venusaur kind of a, a stally moveset. Um, he's got the Leech Seed, Sleep Powder, Giga Drain, and Sludge Bomb. Giga Drain and Sludge Bomb obviously getting that same type of attack bonus. It, it will be walled by things like Steel Types, but um, that's why you got the Sleep Powder and the Leech Seed. Um, sleep Powder might seem like a questionable move just because if you have Toxic Spikes on the field, you're not going to be able to Sleep Powder anything. But there are a lot of Pokemon that are either Flying or Steel Type, and they won't be hit by Toxic Spikes at all, which is one of the reasons that I've decided to give Venusaur the Sleep Powder uh, instead of a, a third coverage move. If you do decide to go for a third coverage move, maybe uh, Hidden Power Fire, something like that, then I would suggest uh, more of an offensive spread, putting some into Special Attack or Speed. But at the moment, he's got massive HP and defense investment, which uh, makes him quite a wall. And generally, I'll find that this thing can stall out basically anything. Um, with relative ease. So, Venusaur, one of the OG Pokemon, definitely deserving of a Mega Evolution, definitely deserving of a spot on my team. Uh, he's he's just a, a crazy bastard, and he's like one of the, the first three Pokemon. Bulbasaur's number one, Ivysaur two, Venusaur three. Uh, so, starting the Pokedex, <laughs> that's a good enough reason for me to get him on the team. So, we found a spot for him. He does relatively well. Uh, let's look at our last Pokemon, which is the Alola form of Muck. It has a Poison and Dark typing, which basically this is the Pokemon that's going to take care of Psychic types for me. Um, psychic types are really, really fast, really, really horrible, um, so he does have the Shadow Sneak, which is going to allow him to hit relatively hard. Um, he does have a little bit of a weird EV spread, uh, 180 in HP, 76 in attack, and then 252 special defense. And the the idea here is basically to use curse and uh, get your attack and special defense, or your attack and your defense up to uh, respectable levels, and then you'll you'll be able to let off some massive poison jabs and shadow sneaks. Again, he's kind of walled by um, steel types and the like. Steel types always really difficult for a mono poison team, but. Um, there are, are enough Pokemon with Earthquake and uh, those types of moves, Stally moves, <laughs> that will uh, hopefully allow me to work through some Steel types. Um, I mean, Steel type isn't really a, a common monotype from what I've noticed. Probably the most common is Water. Um, 
So yeah, we'll just have to see how it goes. That's how most things are. He's got a Chesto Berry, uh, Curse, Rest, Poison Jab, Shadow Sneak. So you curse, curse, curse until you're about to die, and then you rest, and uh, you can let off with the Poison Jabs and Shadow Sneaks. Poison Touch is his ability, which basically uh, allows him to poison things, um, whether it has poison as an additional effect or not. So Shadow Sneak might get the uh, additional poison. That is, um, yeah not so likely basically because we're packing the toxic spikes on this team so they're gonna be poisoned as soon as they switch out poison touch not really a great ability for him but um yeah it, it doesn't hurt so much it ain't too bad so uh let's let's put this team to the test shall we and we'll see uh how it goes i'm relatively hopeful mono poison definitely a strong type especially with the the uh fairy type added in gen 6 so, uh, it wasn't that strong before, but now I'm seeing a lot more Fairy-type teams, and Mono Poison can definitely put a hole in all of them. So, let's see how it do. Okay, we are up against a, uh, quite ubiquitous Mono-type Water that I was talking about a little earlier. So, he leads off with a Pelipper. That thing's gonna hit me with a Hurricane, but that's fine. It looks like I'll be able to weather two of those and set up my Toxic Spikes. Pelipper also uh, has Drizzle, which set, sets up the rain every time that he comes out, so I'm going to need to be extremely careful, play around that, uh, because he's also got Kingdra, Ludicolo, both of which very likely have Swift Swim. He does get the confusion on me with that Hurricane, but luckily I'm able to break through it and get up that second layer of Toxic Spikes, and he has absolutely nothing to remove it. I'm going to pull out the Toxapix now, send in Crobat, um, and... Toxapex will recover 33% of its HP. Hopefully Crobat will be able to outspeed this thing and destroy it. But no, he's definitely got the Choice Scarf. Uh, Pelipper outspeeding Crobat is almost unheard of, so... He did surprise me with that Choice Scarf. I'm gonna have to be a little more careful. Send in my specially defensive Muck now, and that thing scares him out uh, relatively well. <clears throat> he goes into Gastron on East, probably going uh, to fire off some Earth moves. But uh, my Muck has that massive special defense investment, so I think that I'm going to be able to weather that relatively well. Toxic damage, obviously, um, racking up on this Gastrodon. That is going to be my plan for the, uh, the long game. Poison Jab doing very, very little because it is a resisted hit. So um, I should have probably gone for another Curse just then, instead of uh, testing out my Poison Jab. But what are you going to do? It's just fine. Earth Power's not getting those special defense drops on me as it has a chance to do. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and rest. My Chesto Berry wakes me up immediately, which is really, really nice. I'm back to full health. This thing is taking a pounding from Toxic. And uh, if I were him, I would switch out as quickly as possible to reset that Toxic timer. But he seems to be staying in here for whatever reason. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put another curse up because I know that I can live through another hit or so. And uh, he, he should be in KO range about now. Definitely because I got a crit on that Shadow Sneak, he's uh, gonna go down to the toxic damage on this turn. But unfortunately, my Muck has also taken a huge beating. Um, and that's not good because he was my specially defensive wall, Venusaur's the physical wall. Um, and I'm not really sure how most of his pokes are built. Uh, I'm not really so scared of this Pelipper, um, but I probably should be. <laughs> Pelipper's kind of one of those laughy Pokemon that you're like, oh, he's too derpy to do anything, but um, he's he's got some power behind him. So I send in the uh, the Venusaur now just to confirm that he is Choice Scarf, and he switches out. Doesn't want to Hydro Pump me again. If he switched to Hurricane, then I'd be like, okay, he's not Choice Scarf. But uh, since he switched out, I confirm now that he is. I tried to go for Sleep Powder on the Pelipper, but he switched into a Ludicolo just in time, and uh, the Sleep Powder failed because Toxic Spikes are on the field, as I mentioned earlier. Kind of a questionable move, but um, it is what it is. He hits me with the Ice Beam, which only does 20% damage thanks to the Thick Fat of Mega Venusaur, and Sludge Bomb is able to knock a huge, huge hole into that Ludicolo, which is super nice. Uh, I think he's going to go for Ice Beam again, so I switch him to Toxapex, which is able to resist that hit relatively well, and Toxic Damage is going to uh, KO this thing. I thought this turn, but it seems next turn. That's going to be just fine. So he goes for the Giga Drain now. That is a, a neutral hit. 
basically the only Pokemon that would take a neutral hit from Giga Drain aside from Nidoking, but that is okay as well. We're doing really, really nice in this fight. Uh, we've lost two pokes, he's lost two pokes, but uh, this Pokemon can, can get out with Regenerator. Bruxish is a new Pokemon that I have not seen uh, in battle before, but it turns out that he does have Psychic Fangs. So I'm really going to miss my <laughs> Alola Muck at this point, I do think. Uh, I sent in Scolipede because he's got that natural defensive bulk, which is really, really nice. And uh, for some reason he switches out. I think it's a Psychic and Water type. He's expecting me to pack the Mega Horn or something like that. But I just go straight for the sword stance, and uh, I'm also going to get the speed boost as he switches back into the Pelipper. And that is a nice thing, because I do pack the Rock Slide. That is going to KO that thing in one hit with the uh, sword stance boost. And I'm also able to boost my speed just a little bit more. He still has that Kingdra with the Swift Swim waiting in the wings, so I'm expecting to see that right about now. And there it is. Uh, it gets the Toxic Poison as it comes out and takes a huge amount of damage from Poison Jab. Unfortunately, he is able to KO me with the Draco Meteor. Um, obviously, it, it is a huge hit. Um, I think 120 base power, and it's boosted by special attack, or same type attack bonus. <sighs> and Scolipede's uh, special defense isn't that strong, naturally. So, now he's got this Bruxus back out here. I go into the Nidoking King for the Sucker Punch. Uh, which does really, really nice damage. I'm able to kind of, uh, yeah, work my way around this thing, even though it is a psychic type. So that's really nice. Um, he, he dies from his own life orb, although my toxic damage would have gotten him at the end of the turn as well. So that is super cool. Uh, now we've basically got his Sharpedo against my Mega Venusaur. I've got um, just a little bit of damage on Venusaur, but we should be able to recover that with Leech Seed and or Giga Drain. And his Sharpedo actually Mega Evolves as well. So this is a Mega Evolving battle uh, at the end here, which is really, really nice to see. I do get the Leech Seed, able to uh, take not so much damage, 41% from the Crunch, uh, which is pretty insane considering how much defensive investment my Venusaur has. So this Sharpedo is really scary. Uh, I should have gone for Giga Drain off the bat, I do think, but we are able to live through the crunch, two crunches as a matter of fact, and I KO with the Giga Drain. So really, really nice battle. I'm liking the way this Monotype Poison is uh, turning out. I might switch a couple things around and make more of a, a specially attacking team, especially I'm looking at Nidoking. Um, he didn't have any physical walls necessarily, uh, maybe Pelipper. But yeah, I think things turned out relatively well. Um, it could have gone south. Water water is a very, very hard monotype to uh, stack up against. So I think this is a fair uh, assessment of my team. If you would have done something different with your poison monotype or would like to uh, request a typing of your very own, do let me know. I always love these monotype battles. I've been Brandon Dayton, friends, your humble narrator. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the content and would like to see something similar, because I would be more than happy to bring it to you. Stay tuned, uh, we're going to have a little bit more of this monotype action, and uh, I hope that you guys will enjoy it. I'll see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye bye One, two, three, four, goodbye, goodbye, see you. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.